Welcome to the video. We're in London still, it's freezing cold. I'm just walking up towards Oxford Circus. I've got my Costa coffee. It's a cold day, I've decided. It might be nice to take you guys on a walk. Hold on. Yeah, it might be good to take you guys on a walk through London. This is Argyle Street. But yeah, uh, Oxford Circus is just down in this direction. Oxford Street is one of the busiest uh, shopping streets in London. You get all the big red buses like these ones going by. Yeah, so I figured what we could do is take a walk through Soho, uh, down to uh, Piccadilly Circus, and then we'll go to Covent Garden, Leicester Square, and we'll go to Buckingham Palace. Sorry, excuse me. I've been in, uh, been in London trying to sort out my passport application because I need a uh, new passport to leave the country. Tomorrow I drive up to Glasgow so I'll definitely show you guys around uh, Scotland. I was also out for a couple of, uh, couple of days in Brighton visiting my sister but I didn't have enough time to do any videos out there. Anyway, this is uh, Oxford Street, got all the usual shops, McDonald's, H&M, Lush, Vision Express, Marks & Spencer, Uniqlo, basically anything you want. I went shopping for some GoPro equipment, so I managed to get some new batteries. For some reason the batteries on this camera keep on overheating. There's a Marks & Spencer's. Yeah, anyway, they keep on overheating and running out of battery super quick. So, I want to film a lot when I get to Pakistan next month. And uh, yeah, I want to uh, have some battery to do that. And I'll take a right here. Oh, oh sorry. These are, uh, these are the black cabs that are famous in London. Although these ones look like they're electric these days, which is different from when I used to live here back in 2000. I lived here from 2012 to 2016 and they definitely didn't have any electric, electric black cabs. So that's a big change. So yeah, this is uh, fabric shops, little, uh, little food shops. Soho is a great place for going out and partying, having some beers after work. I think Brewdog's actually a, a Scottish company originally. Started up in Aberdeen if I'm not wrong. And uh, they started brewing their own beers. So they sell their own beers in some of the some of the supermarkets in in the UK. But yeah, you actually find that quite a lot. That's uh that's not that common, that one, because usually what happens with these chains of uh, food places, they go and test the, the concept in London, and then they see if it works out, and then if it's working, then they branch out and take the, take the same concept to different parts of, of the UK, but Brewdog seems to have been one that did the reverse and they Tested it out and all right, mate. All right, mate. How's it going? Yeah, sweet. Good. They have all these uh, what's it called remote workplaces here. This one looks like it's called Work Life, but yeah, they have a lot of We Works. I used to go to. I was a very big company back in the day. Anyway, this is Soho. Oh. People also get around on those bikes. Around, around London. But yeah, Soho's got lots of little boutique shops. There's a shoe shop, grooming room, so that's one, that's a hairdresser's. And yeah, just a lot of little boutiques where you might find on the high street of 
Oxford Street, you'll find all the big shops. You can find like little places that sell jeans or high-end clothing. They are usually quite expensive, the shops around here, because the rent in Soho is still pretty, pretty high, but usually a bit more eclectic on the type of uh, stuff that they sell. See these clothing shops? Quite cool in there. I remember when I was younger getting taken to uh, to London by my cousin Una, who's a lecturer in the fashion department of a big fashion school, let's say, one of the biggest in London. And uh, she, uh, she used to take me out and show me around London because she was a bit older than me. So I've been coming down to London for years growing up, even though I grew up in Scotland. Universal Works. And this place down here, this is a food stall where people go and grab their, uh, grab their lunch. I guess you could call this London street food. But the thing about London street food is it's not really British food because everyone watching this might think that British food has a bad reputation but we just steal all the food from all the different countries around the world. So there's Greek food, Afghanistan food, Greek I think, Egyptian, what else do they have? Halal, Ching Chang Bao, Tayaya. Ooh. All right, that's good. What kind of, which country is this food from? Uh, it's Latin and Caribbean inspired. All right, so thank you. Winning fried chicken and grilled chicken. Nice, check it out. How's it going? You good? <laughs> Mediterranean food. Yeah, and it just keeps on going. They've got food from all over. Burger and chips. Nice. Very good chips to go, come on. <laughs> yeah, and then they've got all these little boutique shops. It's amazing, you can just get lost in Soho with all these little shops all over the place. Loads of food places, Jamaican. And the thing about the UK is, obviously, it's got a bad reputation for the British Empire. Oh, there's Jerusalem food. And then they've got some uh, food market. Yeah, I mean, obviously the UK has pretty, pretty uh, bad rep in some senses from uh, from the colonial times and that sort of thing. But one thing about Britain is it's got a great mixture of people bringing all their different food from all the different places, every country in the world, and. That's the history of it, but also London's just such a diverse city you, and everyone's mixed up together, getting the tube together, getting the bus, living together, working together. So everyone's, uh, you know, it's not, it might have a kind of difficult past in some instances, but it seems to work. Modern, diverse, cultural, culturally, uh, United Britain, even though it's, there are challenges with it. For me, coming back to London, it's super interesting when you compare this place to somewhere like Cape Town, where I just came from, or uh, or South Africa in general. Definitely a lot more integrated, which is nice. And it's more of what I'm used to. Um, yeah. So anyway, we're in the middle of we're in the middle of Soho and we are just walking down towards Chinatown. They have a lot of these old British pubs as well. That's where you'll get something like fish and chips or burger and mash. My hair keeps on moving. One sec. Yeah, that's where you'll get pie and mash and that type of thing. So the traditional British food. 
we've got a building over here there's like every time you walk around London you'll just happen upon some amazing architecture some old gothic building and you also see theatre halls London Soho is super famous for having a lot of uh, a lot of musical theatre this one is Les Miserables which has been running for years and years and then you'll see a street like this that has uh, more shops more restaurants yeah it's hectic and the traffic is busy so today is uh, Tuesday it's in the afternoon so most people are in the office it's not rush hour right now and it's still pretty busy and here we enter Chinatown So all the restaurants in here will be uh, Chinese and uh, they'll have Chinese supermarkets and things, places where Chinese people can go and uh, get what they want. It goes all the way down there, super, super long. And you can tell where Chinatown is because it's got these, uh, these covers, these, uh, I don't know, what would you call them? Lanterns covering all of Chinatown. But then you enter Chinatown at this, Chinese gate, which is cool. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's quite interesting for me coming back to London, having not been here for a long time. London's an interesting place to live and work. Um, people are just all hustle bustle uh, when it comes to, to work. Look, there's some more of these uh, black cabs. You don't get that many motorbikes zooming around in London. Actually, it's just strange because it is very congested, so it'd be better if there were more motorbikes. But yeah, it's very crazy living in London because you have to get on the tube very, very early and everyone jam packs into the, the, the tube stations. You've seen my previous video, what the tube's like, but that's nothing in comparison to what it's usually like at the rush hour but uh, yeah people just go to the offices it's interesting for me seeing people kind of in their suits going to the offices wearing their black leather shoes and ties and yes yeah, very uh, very strange experience coming back because that used to be my life and maybe it'll be my life again one day if this uh, this doesn't pan out, but for now it's very interesting to see people still kind of living a life like that. It's, I mean, it's fine, it's just security and there's a lot of great jobs that people can, can do. I wonder what's going on over here. Sorry guys, uh, I don't have time for that. So yeah, we'll walk along to Covent Garden. Yeah, so this is Leicester Square. So William Shakespeare statue over there. But this is where they would have all the big premieres of all of the big, all of the big movies that come out in London. Right now it doesn't look like there's any movies on, but there are some buskers. You get a lot of good live music out on the streets for tourists and you also get live music in the subway tube areas sometimes. <laughs> direction we get towards Covent Garden which is a nice little cobbled square uh, with lots of restaurants and, and things so funny I uh, 
I haven't been back in London for or in the UK for over a year and a half and I was walking down the street just before I started making this video and I bumped into a girl called Lauren that I know from Glasgow that works in Soho which is crazy that you can such a small world yeah yeah so Leicester Square Station And a lot of the time, a lot of the time, people don't really get to see London properly because they'll just hop on and off the tube. So this is quite nice, even though it's chilly, for me, got me to take you guys on a on a journey to some of the different spots there are for tourists to see. This is Pret. I go into uh, Pret a lot, but I'm I'm here. The food is good. This isn't an advert. I just uh, I just like it. I think Covent Garden is in this direction. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, Five Guys is uh, an import, I think, from the US. Same with Burger King and many other shops. Most of the, hit the high street shops are a mixture of British shops and also international ones that branched out. Fuji film. I wonder if they do GoPro equipment. Doubt it. Scotch and soda, TK Maxx. But yeah, it's been freezing cold the whole time I've been I've been back, even out in Brighton. Visiting my sister, it's been freezing cold. I spent a bit of time trying to get the channel a bit more organised, so I've been redoing thumbnails. Hey there, you good? I've been redoing thumbnails and then I've been putting chapters you'll be able to see at the bottom here or here you'll be able to see there's like chapters to the video so I've been going back through all my old videos over the last few days while I was in Brighton trying to add chapters so hopefully that helps people watching these videos because they're quite long Yeah, they get cyclists going around delivering things a lot as well as bikes. I've got some friends that have done that job and it keeps you fit and busy. So that's good. Reese is a nice clothes shop. Hobbs. And yeah, you'll... Uh, See Covent Garden subway station. Not all of these subway stations actually link up with one another. It depends which underground line you're on. That building's nice with all the shrubbery growing off of it. And I think. Oh, sorry, dude. <laughs> You're on the road. Okay, so this is Covent Garden. Here's a map. This is a list of all of the different things that are available in Covent Garden. That's Covent Garden Station. Seems to be some school trip going on. The other thing I I saw in the Costa Coffee that I was sitting in before I started the video, I met some guys from Uganda. I heard one of them saying Kabaka, uh, hello Kabaka, when uh, when the lady walked in. That means our leader, which I recognised. But then they started speaking Swahili to one another, which was strange for me because. 
or they started speaking, they said a couple of words. They said Asante and Karibusana. So I thought that was a bit strange because I know they speak Lugandan. But yeah, I met some British, British Ugandans, which was nice. This is Covent Garden. See, they have like Dior, oh, Tom Ford. Then they've got the central hall here. They have lots of different pop-ups. So I'm selling art. How are you? These are amazing. Bags. I guess this is all felt stuff. How's it going? They always have a lot of uh, performances happening in the middle of nice Covent high. Garden as well. Nice and high, so everybody here in Covent Garden can see. Interesting. Well, unfortunately, I'm going to get done for copyright if I uh, hang around here for too long, so... Little downstairs eating area. Boutiques. Jewelry. A and B. Yeah, so this is definitely one of the more, what would we say, touristic places. People will definitely come to London to come to Covent Garden to go shopping to see the performances. Ha <laughs> ha 
So, that's Covent Garden. Okay, so that was Covent Garden. Now we're going to go to Piccadilly Circus. But before we get to Piccadilly Circus, I'm going to show you guys the Thames because we have obviously got the London Eye on the Thames, which is incredible. Again, more cobbled streets. A lot of people cycle bikes around here. And then we've got those street bikes for hire that people can have. For all of the buildings, you have a lot of this red brick, old red brick buildings. People use them for different things. Either their coffee shops, see upstairs there's a coffee shop, maybe storage areas. People also live in a lot of these are uh, places for people to live. But more often than not, people will use them for offices, for work because it's pretty expensive to just live in central London. Most people live slightly outside London or you'll get somebody like my sister and brother-in-law. They often work in London but they'll live somewhere like Brighton. This is the Strand by the way. Yeah. I say yeah. Let's cross over. This is taking you towards East London, towards uh, towards Bank. But yeah, most people don't live in central London. They live outside in the different zones on the tube line. And then sometimes if people can work remotely, then they'll work, live a little bit further out and they'll come into London once or twice a week for work and it saves them some money on rent and also if they've got kids it's much better for the kids growing up outside of the city centre The other thing about London streets is that they introduced congestion charges for cars entering I think zone one maybe other zones within London so it's to incentivize people to take the tube or to take buses because they would have to pay a charge for entering the central London and their cars so a lot of people end up taking taxis or Ubers or or buses or tube or whatever other public transport means to get around. This place Leon is pretty good. Little deli. Yeah. This is a fancy hotel chain called Me. Been up there, there's a rooftop bar a lot of people go to. And this is a very popular place called Greg's. And people go and get pastries and things, but it's it's pretty cheap. But with inflation these days, it's not even that cheap. It's probably a couple of pounds for for a sausage roll, where it used to be like 99p. Everything's going up in price back here because of, uh, yeah, many factors. Also, I'm here in London on the day that they just signed a new deal with the European Union after Brexit. That was a bit of a issue. I wonder what's in here. I've never actually been in here before. Ah, Somerset House. Beautiful. That's the crazy thing about London, you can just 
happen upon something beautiful like this you didn't even know it existed I lived here for four years and I don't think I've ever been to Somerset House before but here we are beautiful yeah little church St Mary Lestrand beautiful and then we're just walking towards the city see a lot of people cycling their bikes to work although it's pretty dangerous because you can have your bike stolen in London if you're not careful I think I had my bike stolen a couple of times while I was living in London people break into these locks so you've got to be got to have a good lock it's not just Kenya that's people rob things like I got my laptop stolen in Kenya but people will rob things in London too if you don't look after them so I think we'll take a right here and we will walk down to the Thames I'll show you guys the Millennium Eye and then we'll go to Westminster and we'll show you the Parliament and then on to Buckingham Palace how's that or maybe it's the other way around I'm not sure anyway these are some of the places that people like to visit when they they come to London they do a walk around all of these areas some of the architecture is incredible but yeah people in London don't tend to go and visit when I was when I was living here and friends from up in Scotland would come and come and visit and they'd ask me to go to Buckingham Palace with them you think you're uh, you don't really like to go and explore those types of things because because you live there and, and you think it's kind of well anyway people don't go and see tourist things in the places that they they live generally so but now I'm excited because I can get to show you guys some of these places yeah. we're coming up to the Thames it's the London Eye in the distance And Westminster Parliament is the main parliament for the whole of the United Kingdom. For anyone, for anyone that's watching this that doesn't know their their uh, knowledge uh, about, for anyone watching this who's knowledge about, oh, this is Somerset House, but from the this side. Ah. Yeah. So for anyone watching this that doesn't know much about the UK in terms of our, of our constitutional structure uh, basically the UK is the United Kingdom and it's the United Kingdom of four countries Scotland England Wales and Northern Ireland Northern Ireland is on the island of Ireland and it's uh, separate from the Republic of Ireland which is a separate country and they are a member of the European Union Whereas, all right, the United Kingdom is not a member of the European Union and uh, Northern Ireland, like I said, is on the island of Ireland and then the other three countries of the United Kingdom, Wales, England and Scotland, are on the island of Britain. So the Westminster Parliament that we're going to see soon is actually, is actually in England, it's based in England, in London. London's the major city of the UK, but it's also the major city of England. And the Westminster Parliament, with Big Ben and all that stuff that you've probably seen pictures of, they are, look at this bus. That's like, that's what the old buses used to look like. That's what the old buses used to look like when when I was a boy 
But yeah, the uh, Westminster Parliament is responsible for most things, or rather, how should I put it? Oh, cabaret, West Side Cabaret story. Somebody's just camping there. Yeah, uh, so the Westminster Parliament is the central government, but then you have what's called devolved administrations and the other regions. So you've got, uh, you know, Scotland would be viewed as a region of the United Kingdom and Wales and Northern Ireland would also be called uh, regions. Questions whether they're actually independent countries or they're just regions of one country. But uh, that's the whole question about whether there should be an independent Scotland or independent Wales or independent or Northern Ireland could uh, could become part of the Republic of Ireland. So there's a lot of debate and questions about the United Kingdom or whether it's that united and whether it should be broken up. Uh, some people want to be independent. So yeah, but uh, f as it stands where we are, Westminster is responsible for things like defence, setting of monetary policy, setting of drug policy, uh, and uh, the overall budget for the UK. And then, for example, where I'm from, Scotland, the Scottish Parliament, which I'll show you in another video, uh, is responsible for things like healthcare, schools, um, that type of thing. And you might have, say, a Conservative government in in uh, the UK, but then you'll have, right now we have a Scottish Nationalist Party responsible for delivering healthcare and education in Scotland. So it becomes kind of challenging because you'll have the central government in London, the Conservatives, criticizing the Scottish government or in Scotland and not really getting along with them that well because they want the Conservative Party to win in Scotland as well, which it's made some advancements uh, over the years, uh, but right now it's not in power in Scotland. Yeah, a lot of challenges within the, the UK, but people probably think the Westminster Parliament is the only parliament in the UK, but it's not. It is uh, one of the parliaments now the thing is, the thing that's difficult for people to understand is there's not a separate parliament for uh, England alone. Westminster covers some things for all of the UK and then the rest of the stuff is covered by those devolved administrations. And then the Westminster parliament also covers healthcare and education and that type of thing for England. So it's all quite confusing but it seems to work and uh, well the UK is not doing that well right now because of high inflation and potential recession and that type of thing and there's a big election coming up soon and the Labour Party are challenging the Conservative Party so there's a lot of a lot at stake potentially the country would go in a different direction What's going on in here? Victoria Embankment Gardens. But yeah, exciting times. Not sure what's going to happen. But like I mentioned earlier, quite good news that there's a new trade deal with the European Union that, from what I've briefly heard in the news, solves a lot of the problems that we were having in Northern Ireland, given Nor that Northern Ireland shares a border with a country which is still in the European Union. Okay, that's enough of the history lesson. I'll just continue showing you about. This is Embankment Station. Walk across the bridge, go and see Westminster. Sorry. Where are you going to put your phone? Or hold it. What happened? 
So this is the Thames. Back in the day you would have seen many many ships going up and down the Thames. Bringing cargo from all over the world. Obviously London would have been the centre of the British Empire which spanned Africa, many of the countries that I've already visited on this channel and also many of the countries that I will because Pakistan, India, uh, yeah, some of the countries in that region were former members of the British Empire. And uh, that's why they speak English as their first language. They drive on the left hand side as well. Not sure about India and Pakistan. I'll need to check that, but yeah. Most of the countries that I've gone to visit have driven on the left. And most of the countries have also uh, used the same plug as the UK. Which is interesting. This is a railway line. And then you can see the London Eye over in that direction. Royal Festival Hall. So actually a lot of people hang out down at these conference centres. Quite nice inside. And people go on river tours up the River Thames. If you can see that dome over there, that is St Paul's Cathedral. All right. Yeah, so this is all part of the South Bank Centre. I shall take you guys inside there. It's very nice. Got these modern centres for people to bring their kids, go and see. They have exhibitions and that type of thing in here as well. Royal Festival Hall. I've still got this coffee but it's freezing cold. Yeah, they would have uh, shows and that type of thing in this area. And people just come here to chill out, hang out, do some work, have a coffee, that type of thing. Quite a nice space. Quite a nice space to hang out. Okay. There's so many different chains of coffee bar and stuff. This one's called Le Pan Quotidien. They do great coffee as well. Cote Brasserie. Been in there a few times, used to go quite a lot. And then you'll see like office spaces upstairs. So, the London Eye is in this direction. If you go that way, you're gonna to get to Tate Modern, National Theatre. I could go to Waterloo down this way, but we're gonna go back towards the London Eye. See some of the high-rise buildings where they have offices. Some of those look like apartment blocks. And then these ones over there are offices 
so yeah that's a mix but the rent's kind of kind of crazy kind of hectic there's the London Eye cool yeah I've actually never have I been on the London Eye I think I came on the London Eye once when I was a kid yeah so I'm not sure when it when it opened maybe towards the year 2000 you can get on these sightseeing buses hop on hop off they usually take you to some of the stops that we've walked around in this video but it's nice to use your legs guys just aren't scared of anyone anymore <sighs> yeah so London Eye Jubilee Gardens doesn't look like they've been particularly well maintained Seagulls are hectic around here. Still using words, still using words from Cape Town. Oh, that's what oh. oh, they sell around here. What's up, dude? How you doing, mate? Caramelized peanuts. Got an ice cream store. Selling UK merch, British flag. It's quite interesting in the UK actually, people sort of have mixed feelings about what their identity is some people when you go to the US people will say like I'm Irish American even though they weren't born in Ireland uh, because that's where their family was from that's where they their ancestors immigrated from but then if you're in uh, the UK there's a mixture because number one say I'm Scottish and then I also feel Scottish but then I'm Brit British from the UK and also kind of European but I guess people that was the whole thing about feeling like you weren't part of the European Union then a lot of people felt like does that mean I'm European if I'm not part of the European Union and then you've got a lot of people who emigrated here in the past they wouldn't necessarily view themselves as any other identity other than British so it's about challenging because you know a lot of people like there's a sort of right-wing racist probably uh, element to politics in the in the UK and it's you know there were used to be signs posted like go back where you came from or that type of thing to people who were brought here during the during the time of the British British Empire and so they feel like well I was born here because it would have been their grandparents that were originally brought here so they just feel like what are you talking about I'm British because I was born here which is true uh, but that's slightly different from the way that American immigrants would view it which is like dual identity I guess you need to have like broad enough mind to say like yeah I'm uh, British I'm Scottish uh, and then which other where your ancestors are for, from but also 
uh, where you live and where you were born. And so you can be multiple identities at the same time. And some people uh, have trouble trying to understand that people can be multiple identities and and yeah, again, like there's a lot of racist people in the UK who would say that somebody that isn't like white Anglo-Saxon, uh, they would say that they're not British. Uh, but Britain is a country of built by uh, immigrants from all over the world, all over the British Empire, all over many other countries now. It's a big population of French people in London, Russians, Chinese, many people from all over the world. So, so yeah, anyway, this is Westminster Parliament and that's the London Eye and it's beautiful. I remember getting a tour around Westminster Parliament when I was a boy, me and my dad asked our local MPs to take us in. Part of me wanted to go into politics back in the day. I was studying law at the time, but I ended up going into banking, but never say never. But it is a big, beautiful building. A lot of people view this building as, well, especially in kind of Northern England, in Scotland, there's a view that this building is kind of a representation of, I don't know, privilege and uh, a sort of mindset that they don't like because, yeah, it uh, harkens back to the, the days of the British Empire, but I've always loved this building. It's beautiful, it's gothic, it's nice. They're doing a lot of work on it. Actually, they had covered up Big Ben for ages and ages, but it looks like while I've been away on my travels, they've, they've fixed it, which is great. And it bongs every half hour and every hour. Yeah. It's the super rich in, uh, in London driving cars like that. Nice. What is it? Lamborghini. It's quite ostentatious. You can't go very fast in these streets though, when you've got so much traffic. Yeah, so uh, Westminster Parliament is made up of essentially three, four things. We've got Big Ben, which is that big uh, clock. And you've got Westminster Abbey, which is a big, um, a big hall where you'll see like Barack Obama doing speeches. Which is either a very high bar or the beginning of a very funny joke. <laughs> that type of thing. And then you've got the two houses of parliament. So you've got the House of Commons and then you've got the House of Lords. And what usually happens is the House of Commons get legislation that the government wants to pass and then they will send it to the House of Lords. House of Lords review it, ask for changes, then it goes back. Then the House of Commons will enact those changes and then, or they'll uh, disagree with them. If they disagree, then it's the House of Commons that has overall control because that was decided in uh, Lloyd George uh, managed to push through legislation because they said that he was going to make loads and loads of lords, uh, uh, labour lords. And so, yeah, he pushed through. What year was that? Well, I can't even remember. It was something to do with the budget. Anyway, uh, that's why the House of Commons has total control, but they do still have to pass things to the House of Lords for assent. And then the Queen will sign off on new laws. So that's the way the Parliament works. And uh, like I said, they've got 
got limited powers for certain parts of the UK, but they have total power for uh, for England. Here is Churchill. He is probably one of the most well-known British prime ministers. Uh, in recent years, it's been kind of questions have been raised about whether Churchill was a war hero or not. Uh, obviously, he was the person who uh, basically got the British people fired up to beat the beat the Nazi regime in Germany. So, in a lot of ways, he fought for freedom and for uh, democracy against the against the dictate, dictatorial tyranny that the German people were under and uh, the history could have been very very different without without Churchill but there are critics that say he was uh, racist against Indians and that he made a lot of mistakes early in his political career so yeah some uh, mixed reviews but overall when you ask many people in Britain anyway what they think about Churchill they have a very positive reflection and there's a lot of movies and books written about him uh, because he's uh, revered so yeah this is the epitaph that's where the they come I think on the 1111 and they the all the former all the living former Prime Ministers of the UK will lay a wreath for the for the fallen. In the First and Second World War. Millions of uh, millions of British men, mainly men, but also I guess women in the Blitz were uh, killed during those two wars and they uh, don't want to forget, we should not forget, sacrifices that they made as well to uh, protect the freedoms that are in uh, the Britons, the Britons have. You know there's a lot of challenges with this country but we do have a dem democratic system with challenges but you know if you know if you don't like your if the populace don't like our uh, the way our parliamentarians are performing then they can throw them out this is Downing Street heavily guarded you often see uh, when they're doing cabinet reshuffles and that type of thing you'll see a lot of the members of parliament walking up those streets to that door to go and uh, get a new job or find out whether they're going to be sacked that type of thing and that's where Boris Johnson recently had to res resign we've got Rishi Sunak now as our our Prime Minister. So that's uh, it's been the big change but it keeps seems to have happened quite a lot recently we've had so many Prime Ministers come and go in the UK it's hard to keep track. This is a monument to the women of World War II. Women obviously played a big part in those wars keeping the home front going, manufacturing, they did a lot of jobs that were vacated by the men that went to fight so yeah actually that was a big reason for the push for women's vote in the UK I know uh, a lot of countries still don't have uh, as many rights for women as we uh, celebrate I guess and uh, benefit from in the UK there are obviously cultural challenges but there are definitely as many 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 legal protections for British women that aren't uh, in place in many other countries around the world so 
you know, you can, we can celebrate that fact that the UK has, has all of those freedoms and rights without uh, accepting that, you know, we're, we're where we should be. There's obviously uh, changes that we need to make sure that we give equal opportunity to, to everyone. Yeah. Anyway, this is uh, this is the horse guard household cavalry. Let's take a look inside. Yeah, so that's the Household Cavalry Museum. I guess this was an old. Uh... Yeah, this will be where the Queen's Cavalry will do their practices and uh, maintain guard. There's a lot of uh, changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace that happens once a day and I guess this is where they keep the, the horses. Let's walk over in this direction. I think this will take us to the palace. Yeah, so this is the Horse Guards Parade. Yeah, so this is the Horse Guards Parade. And then this should take us up to the mall, which we can walk down. Once we get to the mall, we can walk down there towards Buckingham Palace. Interesting conversation going on. I wonder what this building is. Looks kind of derelict. Strange. Strange to see something like that in the central London. Everything's getting redeveloped constantly, but this one's got a tree growing up the side of it. Very interesting. There must be some reason why that's allowed to to grow like that. Strange. If anyone knows what this is, let me know in the comments. But we're walking onto the mall now. And the mall is famous for when they have a big wedding, like Harry to Meghan or William to Kate. Uh, or when they have a death in the family, Princess Diana uh, and the Queen recently, obviously, she, uh, she died. They would have um, a big procession down the mall. It was quite interesting when the Queen passed away. I was away traveling. I think I was in, where was I? I was in Tanzania at the time, in Dar es Salaam. But, she actually died in Scotland. This is the mall. She died in Scotland, in Windsor, which is where she actually spent most of her time. Uh, Buckingham Palace, obviously, they have big ceremonial events, but she used to spend a lot of time out in the Highlands in Scotland. And I think she enjoyed spending her time there away from the hustle and bustle of, of London. And it was interesting when she died because Prince Charles, now King Charles, needed to come to Scotland uh, to visit, I guess, to deal with his mother's affairs. And they had a procession or an event in, in Edinburgh first, where everyone had to shout, God save the King. And there's always uh, 
an element in Scotland where I'm from where people, some people are very anti-British especially when they feel they're part of Scotland and they don't feel like they're not part of the UK and a lot of people in Scotland, at least around 45% because yeah, sorry, my battery died. So, yeah, at least 45% of Scottish people uh, view, uh, th thought that the Scotland should be independent. And a lot of that is because they felt like the UK or England or London or the Queen as representative of it all was a kind of oppressive regime. I don't know. I think, uh, I think a lot of people kind of overhype that stuff and uh, it's probably an institution we should be proud of I don't think there's a better alternative either you have you need somebody to perform the role of head of state and why not have it as an unelected official if it's an elected official then they're probably thinking about what's in it for them so you know after they their term ends you know they're always thinking about you know the benefit to to them or they're trying to further their own political aims. So probably if it's just a role, a figurehead role without any real powers, which the the king or queen, the now now the king holds, then I guess it's uh, a hereditary position. It's probably for the best, but yeah, there's a lot of power and privilege or at least a lot of privilege that comes with the role that people don't like. Especially when people's lives are so hard and they see uh, a hereditary system of uh, the head of state that allows people in the royal family to just to just live their lives free from concern. I think the at least the monarchy in the UK has tried to reposition themselves, and I think the Queen did this well to reposition herself as a as a kind of servant of the people servant leadership and so in some ways they do perform a good role whether it's in foreign affairs they're brought in to try to smooth things over with other leaders and a lot of other countries hold the institution of the monarchy in the UK they hold it in high esteem and so it can be soft power on the global stage for Britain. Uh, so it has some benefits, especially when they're separate from the political considerations of the, the Prime Minister of the day. People in other countries can feel that the hereditary system of the UK has some sort of longevity uh, that stands the test of time. And that's what you need to think about in generations, I guess, uh, when you're a king or queen rather than just the politics of whether they should fund the NHS more, the National Health Service. Yeah, so anyway, I've got a lot of views on, uh, on this, which we don't need to go into, but this one is Buckingham Palace. All right. We are approaching Buckingham Palace. These are the grounds. There's always so many tourists going around Buckingham Palace taking photos, especially at the changing of the guards. I think that's Queen Victoria on the statue. She reigned for, she was the longest reigning monarch, I think, prior to the late Queen Elizabeth. Uh, and now, yeah. I think Queen Elizabeth has superseded or surpassed her reign but yeah the Victorian era was marked with big changes for for the UK and I think uh, the Elizabethan or the second Elizabethan era that just came to an end oh, I can't get across there all right so this is Buckingham Palace I hope you guys have enjoyed the tour of London, the great walking tour. We've seen a lot, the real life of Londoners walking around the city. 
and uh, yeah, I hope this interest, this video was interesting for you guys. Uh, I've obviously got mixed feelings about London as a Scottish person, but in general, I love this city. I had four years of amazing times here, made some great friends, uh, did some super interesting work around the, the banking industry. I didn't show you the Bank of England, but that's another amazing place in the city of London. I'm driving up to Scotland tomorrow with my friend Natalie. So in the next video, I'll no doubt show, show you a bit of, yeah, a bit of Glasgow, an old industrial city, uh, or the second city of the British Empire. And I will also show you some of Edinburgh before we take our journey to Pakistan. Yeah. All right, cool. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.